Shura, Arabic, Shri Shura is an Arabic word for consultation. The Quran and the Prophet Muhammad encourage Muslims to decide their affairs in consultation with those who will be affected by that decision. Shura is mentioned as a praiseworthy activity often used in organizing the affairs of a mosque, Islamic organizations, and is a common term involved in naming parliaments. <laughs> Shura in Islam Sunni Muslims believe that Islam requires all decisions made by and for the Muslim societies to be made by shura of the Muslim community and believe this to be the basis for implementing representative democracy. Traditionally however, the Emir, Sultan, Khalifa would consult with his wazirs advisors and make a decision, after taking into consideration their opinions. Shia Muslims say that Islam requires submission to existing rulers if they are correctly appointed, so long as they govern according to sharia or Islamic law. This is a more traditional approach, characteristic of many centuries of Islamic history see History of Islam. The difference between the two appears more semantic than actual—the latter accept that the rulers must be accounted in all aspects of ruling, to ensure affairs are managed in the best possible way whether decisions were taken through consultation or not. <laughs> Shura in the Quran The first mention of the shura in the Quran comes in the second surah of Quran 2-233 in the matter of the collective family decision regarding weaning the child from mother's milk. This verse encourages that both parents decide by their mutual consultation about weaning their child. The 42nd surah of Quran is named as shura. The 38th verse of that surah suggests that shura is praiseworthy lifestyle of a successful believer. It also suggests that people whose matter is being decided be consulted. The Quran says, Those who hearken to their Lord, and establish regular prayer, who conduct their affairs by mutual consultation among themselves, who spend out of what we bestow on them for sustenance, are praised. The 159th verse of 3rd Surah orders Muhammad to consult with believers. The verse makes a direct reference to those Muslims who disobeyed Muhammad, indicating that ordinary, fallible Muslims should be consulted. The Quran says, Thus it is due to mercy from God that you deal with them gently, and had you been rough, hard-hearted, they would certainly have dispersed from around you. Pardon them therefore and ask pardon for them, and take counsel with them in the affair, so when you have decided, then place your trust in God, surely God loves those who trust. The first verse only deals with family matters. The second proposed a lifestyle of people who will enter heavens and is considered the most comprehensive verse on shura. The third verse advises on how mercy, forgiveness and mutual consultation can win over people. Muhammad made all his decisions in consultation with his followers unless it was a matter in which God has ordained something. It was common among Muhammad's companions to ask him if a certain advice was from God or from him. If it was from Muhammad, they felt free to give their opinion. Sometimes Muhammad changed his opinion on the advice of his followers like his decision to defend the city of Madinah by going out of the city in Yuhad instead of from within the city. Arguments over shura began with the debate over the ruler in the Islamic world. When Muhammad died in 632 CE, a tumultuous meeting at Saqifah selected Abu Bakr as his successor. This meeting did not include some of those with a strong interest in the matter especially Ali ibn Abi Talib, Muhammad's cousin and son-in-law, people who wanted Ali to be the caliph ruler, later known as Shia, still consider Abu Bakr an illegitimate leader of the caliphate. In later years, the followers of Ali, Shia to Ali as the ruler of Muslims became one school of thought, while the followers of Abu Bakr became the Sunni school of thought. The Sunni school of thought believe that shura is recommended in the Quran though some classical jurists maintained it is obligatory, the Quran, and by numerous hadith, or oral traditions of the sayings and doings of Muhammad and his companions. They say that most of the first four caliphs, or rulers of Islam, whom they call the four rightly guided caliphs, were chosen by shura, see succession to Muhammad, Umar ibn al-Khattab, the election of Uthman, and Ali ibn Abi Talib. The Shia school of thought believe that Muhammad had clearly indicated that Ali was his appointed infallible ruler of Muslim nation regardless of shura, a recommendation that was ignored by the first three caliphs. Shia do not stress the role of shura in choosing leaders, but believe that the divine vice-regent is chosen by God, or Allah, from the lineage of Muhammad al -al The largest Shia sect believes that the current imam is in occultation. 
hidden away until the last days, but there are minority Shia who follow leaders believed to be infallible imams. <laughs> Shura and the Caliphate During and after Imam Ali's tenure as caliph, the Muslim community fell into civil war. Power was eventually grasped by the Umayyad caliphs and then by the Abbasid caliphs. There were also rival caliphates in Egypt and Al-Andalus, the latter of which is today known as Spain. Later the rulers of the Ottoman Empire inherited the caliphate. The Ottoman caliphate was officially dissolved by the newly founded Grand National Assembly of Turkey in 1924. Few of the later caliphs had anything but nominal control over the many Islamic states, and none were chosen by shura, all reached power by inheritance. The Muslim clergy counseled submission to rulers but also stressed the duty of the ruler to rule by shura. They based this recommendation on the passages from the Quran mentioned above. The verses indicate that shura is praiseworthy but do not indicate who should be consulted, what they should be consulted about, or whether the ruler or the shura should prevail in the event the two do not agree. Shura and contemporary Muslim majority states In some Muslim nations, shuras play a role in the constitution or governance. Some Muslim nations, such as Turkey, are secular republics, and Morocco is a constitutional monarchy. They could thus be said to be ruled by one version of shura. For instance, the bicameral parliament of Pakistan is officially called the Majlis-i-Shura, although the constitution uses various spellings of the term. In Egypt, the upper house of parliament is known as the Shura Council. The People's Consultative Assembly in Indonesia is called Majlis Permasiawarat and Rakyat in Indonesian language. The word Musiawarat is derived from Shura, Siawara. In some monarchies and clerical regimes, there is a Shura with an advisory or consultative role. Saudi Arabia, a monarchy, was given a Shura Council, the Consultative Assembly of Saudi Arabia, in 1993. There are now 150 members. All real power is held by the king, who is elected by family members. Oman, also a monarchy, has a Shura Council. All members are elected except the president, who is appointed by the Sultan. The council can only offer advice, which may be refused if vetoed by the Sultan. In Iran, a council called the Assembly of Experts has the ability to impeach the supreme leader. In addition to that, a general shura wields legislative powers, equivalent to a modern-day Western parliament. Shuras have also been a feature of revolutions in Islamic societies, such as in the Iranian Revolution of 1979, where they were formed by workers and held considerable power over parts of the economy for a year before being dismantled. Shuras were similarly a feature of the uprisings in Iraq in 1991, where they functioned as a form of participatory democracy. Topic. Resemblance between Majlis al-Shura and a parliament Many traditional Sunni Islamic lawyers agree that to be in keeping with Islam, a government should have some form of council of consultation or Majlis al-Shura, although it must recognize that God and not the people are sovereign. Al Mawardi has written that members of the Majlis should satisfy three conditions they must be just, have enough knowledge to distinguish a good caliph from a bad one, and have sufficient wisdom and judgment to select the best caliph. Al Mawardi also said that in emergencies when there is no caliphate and no Majlis, the people themselves should create a Majlis, select a list of candidates for caliph, and then the Majlis should select a caliph from the list of candidates. Many contemporary Muslims have compared the concept of shura to the principles of Western parliamentary democracy. For example, What is the shura principle in Islam? It is predicated on three basic precepts. First, that all persons in any given society are equal in human and civil rights. Second, that public issues are best decided by majority view. And third, that the three other principles of justice, equality and human dignity, which constitute Islam's moral core, are best realized, in personal as well as public life, under shura governance. Other modern Muslim thinkers distance themselves from democracy. Taqiyuddin al-Nabani, the founder of the modern transnational Islamist party Hizb ut tahrir writes that shura is important and part of the ruling structure of the Islamic caliphate, but not one of its pillars. If the caliph neglects it by not paying much or any attention, as happened after the first four caliphs, 
He would be negligent, but the ruling system would remain Islamic. This is because the shura consultation in Islam is for seeking the opinion and not for ruling. This is contrary to the parliamentary system in democracy. The democratic parliamentary system being distinct from and inferior to the true Islamic caliphate system according to Taqiyuddin and Nabani, under the Hizb ut Tahrir constitution, non Muslims may not serve a caliph or any other ruling official, nor vote for these officials, but may be part of the majlis and voice complaints in respect to unjust acts performed by the rulers or the misapplication of Islam upon them." Still others, such as the Muslim author Sayyid Qutb, go further, arguing that an Islamic shura should advise the caliph but not elect or supervise him. In a rigorous analysis of the shura chapter of the Quran, Qutb noted that Islam requires only that the ruler consult with at least some of the ruled usually the elite, within the general context of God-made laws that the ruler must execute. In 1950 Qutb denounced democracy in favor of dictatorship, saying it was already bankrupt in the West and asking why it should be imported to the Middle East, the practice of a consultative, but not bill-passing, caliph-electing or popularly elected shura, was adopted by the self-described strict Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. While the Kandahar shura of the Taliban debated issues, in the end its spokesman declared, We abide by the emir's view even if he alone takes this view. Soviet etymology In Persian language and Dari in Afghanistan, the term Shwarwi, Sharavi is used for Soviet the etymology being related to council. In Tajik language it is written Saravi. See also Islamic democracy References External links Liberal Democracy and Political Islam, The Search for Common Ground Ijihad.org Alhuwar.com Shura.org <laughs>